This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello there, and welcome to the third installment of me turning weird images that you send me into character designs. I am once again your host, a literal vampire, and also a YouTuber who is occasionally good at planning. You see, at the time of recording this, it is actually January 24th. That's because on the week that you're seeing this, I will actually be on vacation in Pennsylvania seeing a side of the family that I haven't seen in like 10 years, and I'm psyched, I'm so excited, and I'm not working while I'm there. No, not doing it. All right, we're not gonna beat around the bush too much today because I know why you guys are here. Weird freaking character designs. Hello. Okay, so this is the second round of recommendations, actually. I haven't looked at any of them yet, so I'm going to be pleasantly surprised. And if you were watching part two of this, it's fiercely out of order. Let's see what Will sent this time. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I really like this first one. It's just a bunch of, I think, stingrays with fruit on them. I kind of want to draw a stingray with fruit on it now. Will said, have some abandoned creepy locations and some adorable little sea pancakes for the aesthetic train. Thank you, Will. L Lou, you know what? I respect you too much. <laughs> oh my god, we have a duck ghost buster, a sick mask. I mean, what can I say? This is just fabulous. Very tempting. Oh god, less tempting. Still intriguing, but I don't know who. Creepy dolls. <laughs> <laughs> me not currently using either of my degrees. What do we have here? Ooh, I actually really like this as an inspiration because I have like sort of a weakness for characters that are just covered in gratuitous amounts of eyeballs. Oh, I love an aesthetic Fiji water. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Thank you, mossysoda.png. That's one I can actually pronounce. People are sending me more webkins. Oh no. First. <gasps> I'm obsessed with random things people have put fake teeth and eyes on, and I feel like you'd like it as well. I love it. Ah! Can I get a hell yeah for some boots with teeth in them? Oh no, now I kind of want to make that for a video. <sighs> God, what have you done? <laughs> oh, Casper the ghost sent me something? I feel so special. Whoa. Once again, another just entire, oh, it just keeps going. This is literally someone's entire Pinterest board. I tried to steer clear from like actual garments and actual like costumes just cause like, I don't want to copy anything. I'm tending to go more for like scenes, inanimate objects, things that don't directly already translate into a garment. Ooh, I love this. Oh, they're earrings. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm kind of an earring girl. Ooh, flower lamp. All right, what, one more for a good measure. Let's go back to Clara. They sent me some really cool stuff last time. Ooh, whoa, I like the seahorse. That's cool. Look at this little friend. Oh, spooky and animate objects. Oh, adore that. Oh, I also really like this. Fish in the, in the phone booth. Oh, this is a virtual treasure trove of inspiration. And this, God, it's so sweet. Okay. Okay, Clara, these go hard. This is a good one to end things on. I am so ready to dig my teeth into these. But before we get designing, let's hear a word from this video's sponsor, Skillshare. I've never been very good at the whole business side of running a business. I've always been pretty creatively focused on like making the project good and also advancing in the skills side of things. So over the years, I've taken quite a range of Skillshare classes for that purpose, from art and sketchbooking, to sewing, to cinematography and video editing. And you may know Skillshare for classes like these. But did you know that Skillshare also has hundreds of career-focused classes? So this year, since I'm trying to grow in some of my entrepreneurial skills, I'm utilizing some of their more business and marketing focused classes, including Brooke Glazer's class, Make a Living as an Artist, Strategies for Crafting Your Creative Business. Brooke's class was super informative about lots of specific areas of running an art small business that I don't hear discussed very often, particularly when it comes to negotiating with different types of clients, all the diverse ways you can earn an income as an artist, and even how to price yourself when you have to worry about higher taxes. She discusses a lot of very intentional steps to creating a successful art business, like developing both a strong portfolio and visual brand identity aimed at your niche. Branding is something I'm really trying to work on right now because all of my graphics are 
pretty outdated. So in line with Brooke's advice, I've been doing some Pinterest board development so that I can create some more cohesive brand imagery and become more unified across all of my platforms. With Skillshare, if you wanna explore your creative and career options, you can learn what it takes to break into a creative industry and take classes to find your creative voice and style. If you want more financial stability or resiliency, you can learn to launch merchandise on a new platform like Etsy or Shopify for passive income and grow your audience through video marketing. And if you simply just wanna to continue to be your own boss, you can learn countless freelance tips, start a new side project to attract the right clients, or learn to start a whole new business. Traditional jumps are not a one size fits all, and I should know, but Skillshare can help you learn how to design a career that fits you. So if you would like to grow in your creative and career skills in 2023, you can do so on Skillshare for free, because the first 1,000 people to join using my link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this character design episode. Now let's get into it. So the images I chose this time are like this Alice in Wonderland looking teapot, this really cool looking old metal building, and this little wind chime that has like whales on it. These were submitted by Yasmin, AKA Jaime underscore Y, Casper the Ghost, and Lilo. I lost some of the actual handles for these people, so I'll have the screenshot of your thing on screen, sorry. <laughs> Hi, car recording here right here. Don't worry, even though I only have three of these now, I'm gonna do another episode really soon. So um, I will be doing more character designs based on images from this batch. So I, I just wanted to say that real quick. Look, there's, there's Pittsburgh behind me. <laughs> so first off, we have this Alice in Wonderland looking teapot. And this is honestly just a very indulgent one. I saw it and I said, oh, that has pretty colors and interesting patterns. It would be fun to turn into a character. And the direction I went with this character is not super deep. It's sort of like your classic Alice in Wonderland inspired anime girl. <laughs> the gist of it is like Maid Cafe anime girl, but down the rabbit hole. So naturally, the base of this is just a cute, poofy, frilly dress. And I really love that teal color on the teapot, so I kind of wanted to base most of the colors of the design around that. And I paired that with the classic, you know, Alice in Wonderland steampunk top hat, especially since I wanted it to be different from like the teacup hat that was actually in the reference. And I decorated that with a few similar trimmings as the trimmings in the reference. And from there, a lot of those trimmings and motifs sort of carried on into the rest of the design. I sort of made that checkered pattern like the statement piece for this dress and put it basically everywhere. <laughs> Especially adding bows and putting it on bows, it just felt like it fit well for this design. I used those bows as trim on like the waistband and also on the sleeve cuffs. And to accompany the bows, I also added the flowers from the original reference. You wouldn't think that it would look good, but I actually really like the juxtaposition of like roses with this harsh checkered pattern. I think it actually works well for the whole like Alice in Wonderland aesthetic. And it also kind of gives me like sports bar casino no vibes, so I think that might be like a possible setting for this character. I will hypothesize character details in just a moment. Sort of following in that whole casino vein, I wanted to bring in that gambling like playing card motif. So I of course added in some playing cards on her hat and also snuck in some little dice as buttons on her collar. And I nearly forgot, she also has dice earrings because I couldn't help myself apparently. <laughs> and to really add to the whole playing card theme, I made her eyebrows super weird. <laughs> so one is a spade and one is a heart. And I also gave her heterochromia to reference the different colors of the suits. I think weird shaped eyebrows are really fun. So I think it's actually a really subtle little design element because it looks fairly normal from far away and then you zoom in and it's like, oh, this designer is quite mad. Little joke for you there. To accessorize the design even more, I of course added some tea paraphernalia because I imagine this character would be doing some waitressing with the teacups, of course, stacked in a very unkempt and unbalanced way. We cannot possibly have order in Wonderland casinos. And you know, to play on the whole casino bit, I just felt like this character needed a bit more of an edge to her. Like I wanted this to be Alice in Wonderland, but if she, for instance, worked at a strange maid cafe in a casino in Wonderland, I don't know where this came from. I, I just, it, it's weird, but that's what makes it fun. So I finished the design off by giving her like a weird veil on her hat. I, I don't know where that comes in, but it just felt like it fit. And I also gave her matching white fishnet stockings and some very chunky high heeled boots, as well as some dainty translucent pink gloves. And I also tried to match the pattern on the pink panel 
rolled down her bodice to the fishnet stockings just to make everything like visually cohesive. In terms of color, I tried to keep everything very close to the reference with that mint color being the most dominant. I of course also gave her blonde hair in accordance with the reference. But the one thing I did try to do was balance in more of the red and pink tones just because I felt like it complemented the mint color really well. Especially whenever you have the blonde thrown in there too. I don't know, it sort of is like the CMY color palette, but to different degrees. So I basically made the yellow blonde the second most dominant color with red as the accent color, just sneaking in little bits of red and pink where I could, especially like in the middle of the bodice and on the bottom of the shoes, just to bring everything together and unify things a little bit. And in terms of characterization, all I'm really thinking is like Alice in Wonderland, but make it a weird Alice in Wonderland casino AU. Sort of like Spirited Away vibes, if that makes any sense at all. Anyways, this one's silly and mostly a layup since it's kind of just a sexy Alice in Wonderland Halloween costume, but I had a fun time. Next up, we have this super cool looking old building. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe I'm just being stupid, but while this is not at all off brand for me in terms of my aesthetics, since it looks vaguely steampunk and Victorian, it is sort of new for me in terms of what I base character designs on, but it is very cool. So I wanted to have a stab at it. So with this one for a slight change, I kind of followed good character design practice and worked backwards from like, what kind of character would live in this world in this environment? And I tried to sort of match the shape language and all the ideas happening in my character design to the actual building, which I think turned out looking pretty cool. So my basic concept for this is post-apocalyptic steampunk bounty hunter. I, I know that's very specific, but hear me out. I think it's very cool. That's my only argument, I'll be honest. <laughs> so going into this, I sort of had like a loose silhouette in mind. I kind of knew what I was going for in terms of I wanted this to be like a buff lady with a big gun, but that's sort of it. So at the beginning, whenever I was trying to come up with like basic silhouette and sort of adapt the architecture into something that resembled clothing, I actually had a very difficult time. And I also struggled a lot with just getting proportions down. And I'll admit now that I'm looking at it a couple of weeks later with like fresh eyes, I still don't quite think I have the proportions down that I was like sort of going for. Still need a lot of practice drawing buff women. But basically my idea was to adapt the architecture in the reference into sort of like armor slash a cold jacket slash greaves, um, sort of following along in like the steampunk aesthetics where it's like, this doesn't necessarily do anything mechanical or practical for the person wearing it, but it just looks very cool. <laughs> just sort of that like, industrial revolution core vibe. But in one way or another, I did want it to kind of look functional enough to be like, okay, this is armor. It could guard you in a situation where you maybe have to fight someone. <laughs> so the biggest statement piece for this outfit is probably like the jacket and the greaves. And for the jacket, I tried to take the curved structures coming off the building and adapt them into like shoulder pieces and also forearm guards or gloves. This was pretty difficult, especially since architecture is not my speciality and the recording you can see me struggling quite a bit, especially as I'm trying to sort of like abstract parts of the building into a shoulder armor piece. But of course, the parts of the building I was trying to abstract weren't exactly shoulder armor shaped, so I had to kind of pick and choose how to alter the shape and also how to like add in different braces to still make it look like the part of the building I was trying to emulate. I basically just settled on taking repeating design elements that were in the building and then applying them to my character design and repeating them in different ways but in ways where they were still visually similar enough to tell, okay, this character design is inspired by this building. Some of those elements were like the domes of the buildings and then some of the X bracing and then some of the railings. I also added in what are essentially windows to add a little bit of variation to the design so it wasn't just all that green color. And one of the elements from the original photo that I expanded on was you can see like a little bit of a yellow light on in one of the windows. And I basically took that and made that yellow color the accent color for the entire character design. I think it looks really nice with that sort of rusted jade green color, which I also made look a little bit more saturated. And to expand on that even more, there's some like rust on the building itself. I also added browns into the color palette of the design to expand even more on that. So I made the shoulders, the forearms, the thighs, and the calves, the main like structural armored areas. And then the torso just has a sort of fitted vest jacket thing with a corseted closure to reference the X bracing on the structure 
picture. It also has a high popped collar because this character just seems the sort. And I wanted to do something interesting with a boob window because I'll be honest, this structure kind of has boob windows. <laughs> this took me a couple tries to make it look flattering, but also structural, but I basically just tried to make it look like the bracing again. And I gave it a slight yellow tint to kind of make it look basically like a window. <laughs> I also gave her some belts with once again, some X's to follow the design language of the bracing on the structure and used a similar bracing design on the greaves as well. For her face and like hair, I thought it might be fun for a change to do a slightly older, more like battle-worn character. So I gave her mostly white hair to carry over the light window color from the reference with a couple of bronze streaks. I think like a brown rust natural hair color would be good for this character before she got stressed out from her job and started to go a little bit gray. I also tried to give her like an angular but also square looking face to follow the shape language of the building, which was admittedly very inspired by Arcane. And because it's a little Arcane inspired all around and because she's grizzled and war worn, I also gave her some scars, including an X looking scar on her cheek, once again as a reference to the bracing. To round off the design, she needed some weapons, so first of all I gave her a very cool looking rapier. Its design language is also inspired by the building using a lot of those design themes that I talked about earlier. And then she just needed a cool rifle. That rifle is not so much inspired by the building as it is inspired very specifically by a steampunk rifle reference I found on Google because I'm not good at drawing guns and I needed my hand to be held a little bit with this one. <laughs> and with that, she is done. Like I said, I'm not entirely pleased with the proportions, but I do really enjoy the concept of the character and drawing something based off of architecture did kind of push me out of my comfort zone. And I have to say, I really enjoy it. And last but not least, we have this whale wind chime, or maybe like it's a baby mobile. It might be the latter actually. I just think it's super pretty and delicate. And at first I was probably going to design like some pretty magical girl or armored lady using this. But then I decided to push myself out of my comfort zone a little bit. And I decided to design a nautical fantasy prince instead. Maybe I just have the Valerians on the brain. That probably is the case. But I do have a growing affection for drawing beautiful men. And this one, much like the previous one, actually pushed me out of my comfort zone quite a bit. I struggled coming up with shapes and a good cohesive idea for this because there is just so much going on in the reference and I wanted to incorporate as many of those shapes and ideas as possible. So the first idea I had for this design and sort of the basis for this concept was to take that sort of arch at the top of the mobile and use that as a bit of a frame around his shoulders. It looks like it could be a cool lapel for a collar or a jacket. So I used it as the shoulder piece for a long flowing cloak that comes down off of his shoulders and ends in some fluffy clouds, once again to reference the image. And there's like a few conflicting themes going on in this reference because I'm getting like ocean and whales and ships, but then I'm also getting very much sky and celestial, which I guess makes sense for sailing and stuff like that. So that is where the nautical seafaring prince idea comes in. And as we continue on, observant viewers might be like, oh, he looks a little bit like Lenor. <coughs> No comment. Since he's more of a seafaring character and I'm thinking he probably lives in a warmer climate, I wanted to keep his shoulders kind of bare. So for his main outfit, I went for sort of a wraparound tunic with a very chunky belt that includes a lot of references also from the image that I'm working from. Anything that I couldn't fit anywhere else in the design, I basically tried to fit into the design on the belt. There's like a little globe and an anchor, lots of gold trim, and then also those like fans that are on the bottom of the mobile. I don't know if that's exactly what that is, but I basically made that as like one folding side of the tunic, if that makes any sense. And of course, whales are very prominent in the design on the reference, so I had to bring whales into this somehow, so I put two whales on his lapels, which I think turned out looking pretty cool. I originally had more whales in this design, and then I was like, hold up, I think that might be too many whales, let's just keep them front and center on the tunic, and I think that that was a good call. For the rest of the clothing, I tried to keep it simple, I had a little bit too much going on at first, so I just gave him regular, normal, navy, poofy pants and some brown boots that have a little bit of gold trim on them. And to accessorize, I dangled some of the charms from the mobile off of his shoulder piece, gave him some vaguely oceanic looking fingerless gloves, added a few waves to his cloak. And if you remember me saying that I kind of wanted to keep his shoulders bare, I did and I didn't do that because I did want to incorporate the nets on the mobile thing into the design in some way. So I thought it would be fun to give him basically like macrame sleeves 
if that makes sense, if that's like a term that could apply to this. I don't know. I think that was a fun way to bring that design element into my design. So I went for it. To bring things together a little bit, I also gave him some white streaks in his hair just because it felt fitting. And apparently I, that's just a thing that I like doing in very many of my character designs. I should probably expand out a little bit, but I don't want to. And finally, who is this character? What does he do? Well, I'm thinking that he is the crown prince of this fictional world that he comes from and a captain in the king's navy. Very adept at navigation and hoisting sails. Um, that That's a thing sailors have to be good at, right? Definitely a bit of a tactician and a charmer with literally everyone. This is kind of just something off the top of my dome, but I also think it would be cool if at some point this character had like a piracy arc. Like maybe he goes through a phase and has like a prodigal son thing going on. He would know his father's shipping lanes and whatnot, so maybe he does a little piracy for a while and then he's like, okay, fine, I'll come be king. Dad, please don't prosecute me for ripping you off for like 12 years. I don't know, just shower thoughts as I'm sitting in my car recording this and listening to the rain pelt down on it. And with that, these designs are done. I, as usual, had such a fun time with these. I always do. This is just one of my favorite exercises to do right now. I really, really wish that I could have done more. I always enjoy doing like a ton of these at once because it gives me so much variety for the characters that I design but it just was not in the cards this week. But rest assured, I will be doing another one of these very soon and also getting back into the regularly scheduled character design nonsense content. So in the meantime, feel free to continue sending me references to use for these videos on Instagram. I don't think you're going to stop. My DMs are an absolute mess, but I, I love to see it, so I don't even mind. Also remember to speculate wildly about character names and backstories in the comments. I also adore reading those every week. So thank you so much for watching. Watching. And as usual, the biggest thank you goes to my very sexy patrons, especially my executive producers. Shay Lee, Sable Skies, The Cat Spark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven Underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Cleos, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, Sushi McNushi, Satoni, Mel W, Jim Jiminy, Jim Jiminy, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Panda Pie 365, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. And right here, future Kira is going to insert footage of me ice skating, or like skiing and falling on my butt.